All right, now here's a little trick with the green skulls. All you have to do is sprint, enter a skull dash, shuri dash, enter a skull dash again. You can see that got us pretty dang far, about 100 meters in just a single move. Get a piece of cover in between you and then go for the jump shot or the sky shot. So if we don't use our sprint the whole time, we actually just dash around without a sprint going, we're gonna get more charges and we're gonna go faster and further. What's going on everybody? Toby Wan Shinobi here and today we're doing a full guide on the Black Panther gauntlets, how to use them effectively for rotations and combat. Now, I will say right out the gate that I thought this item was pretty garbage when it first came out. Wasn't really impressed by the movement, wasn't really impressed by the melee, and I've kind of changed my mind on that once I've learned some secrets, some tricks on how to use these things effectively. But I will still state that the jetpack is just superior in every single way in terms of movement. It just has a lot more utility for juking around, uh, going further, faster, and it's just an incredible movement item and pretty much unbeatable by any other mobility item. And I'm hoping that the Black Panther gauntlets get a buff so that they're a little bit more effective and a little more competitive with the jetpack. Maybe if they buff the speed of the movement when you're dashing or the distance of the dashing, I think that would be really helpful. And another thing that I want to note about this item is that it is not a good melee weapon. In its current state, unbuffed as it released, this is a very bad melee weapon. You do not want to get in people's face with this thing because it doesn't deal enough damage. It does not knock them around. It makes you a very very easy headshot for a shotgun and people will probably pull the trigger on your face two times and kill you for over 250 damage. So don't ever fully commit to just pure meleeing people. I know it's very, very tempting to just mash that button and attack them, but as it stands right now, this is not a melee weapon, but I will show you how to use it effectively in combat and make it a very useful tool for mobility and dealing some damage. So let's get into it. Okay, so here's what I did not understand about the Black Panther Claws or Sherman Black Panther claws. That is so incredibly important. When you watch the recharge rate on these things, right? Look at the, I'm at 10% right now, 14% right now, 15%. You can see it on the icon. You can also see it when I have it equipped as like my ammo indicator. Well, it goes extremely fast though, if you are sprinting. As Soon as you enter a sprint, you get in this mode right here. Look how fast that thing recharges. And this right here, in my opinion, is what makes these worth carrying. If you can't recharge your super, then they're really not all that good because all you can get is about three dashes out of these things before you fully run out of stamina. And once you're out of stamina, you're just gonna land and get in a fight and have no stamina during the gunfight and in zero build, if you have no stamina during a fight, you're probably going to die unless you have good cover. Building up the super is incredibly important because you wanna enter every single fight with your super activated. So, you know, this is how we enter a fight. If somebody was in the middle of this, uh, this building or this courtyard over here, this is how we'd come in. All right, we activate our super, and now we come in like this. Take a couple shots, boom, boom. We try to cut them off. We look straight up in the air. We get on the roof, dash down, go like this, come through this building, dash through, boom, right? That's actual movement that's worth using because we have unlimited sprint. We're moving quick. We have unlimited dashes. Now, do keep in mind that every single time you dash, you have to then touch the ground to dash again. So you cannot double dash in the air like the old kinetic blade or anything like that. Instead, you have to dash, touch the ground, and then you can dash again. But if you have no sprint or no stamina, you cannot do that, which is a major problem. And that is why it's so important to build your super energy up just like this. And it's not bad because when you're doing this, you're also moving really fast. So not like you're just an easy target for people to hit. You can kind of zigzag around while you're build, building it up like this, right? And now we've got it active and now we can, you know, run really fast. There's some interesting stuff you can do with this power. So let's show you how to use it most effectively. All right, now one very important trick with these claws is that when you're trying to get onto high ground like this, 
you do not want to aim at a 45 degree angle or aim at the ledge. Because if you aim at the ledge, you're gonna be able to clamber up like this, which is okay. But if somebody's on that ledge or somebody's on the roof and they're ready for you, they're looking at that ledge, you're gonna get shot in the face maybe once or twice before you even get your gun out to fight, right? So instead, what you wanna do is aim a lot higher. The way these gauntlets work is that basically where your reticle goes is where your head goes. So you wanna put your head up higher above the ledge and then you'll land on top of the ledge and you don't have to enter a clamber. Now this can be really helpful if you're in a fight, you're pushing somebody, right? And you you have to be within about 10 meters of the building. 10 meters is a safe distance. If you're too far out, you're gonna come up short like this, right? Because you have that, that killed momentum at the end of your dash. So you wanna be about 10 meters and then you wanna aim higher than you think, and then you'll be able to enter a fight just like that, or you'll be able to keep your momentum like this, where you can land into a slide, right? And you don't break that momentum which uh, really slows you down. So anytime you're trying to climb up something high, you wanna aim higher than you think, and that's gonna get you at least the clamber or maybe even all the way up. But if you aim at the ledge like this, you're gonna come up short. Now, one thing I will note about Shuri's claws and using them with the jetpack and combining them with all kinds of other movement techs is that the dash attack really just kind of kills your momentum, right? So if you pull out a shockwave and you're going and then you do a dash attack, it just kind of drops you out of the sky because it kind of has this weird, finish to the end of the dash where you just kind of fall so not all that good to combine with other things uh it's okay with flowberry fizz but it still kind of has that same effect where you just don't carry your momentum and it slows down your touch to the ground which is kind of what you need to keep those dashes going well it is what you need to keep the dashes going got to touch the ground every time and uh the flowberry fizz can actually slow you down from doing that so become a little bit easier of a target to hit if you're uh, on Flowberry Fizz. Another small note about the Black Panther Claws is that they make you immune to fall damage as long as you're sprinting. So I'm not sprinting here, I'm gonna take fall damage, but if you are in the dash move like this, or if you're sprinting like this at all, even if you don't get into the full movement of it, even if you just come off this edge like this and do that, you do not take fall damage. So. Uh, make sure that you're hitting some sort of sprint or a dash uh, before you jump off anything high, otherwise you will die. All right, now a lot of you might be wondering, and myself, are Shuri Gauntlets even comparable to the jetpack? And they even keep up with rotating through the map, right? So let's just do a quick test here. I'm gonna drop a pin on this gas station right here, okay? That's 148 meters away. And then I'm just gonna run from this corner right here on this white line to that point using the Ultra of the Gauntlets. Okay, this is how long this is gonna take. And we're following the white line. As soon as we get to this pillar, we stop. Okay. All right, now let's do it with the jetpack using jetpack skating and compare the two different times. Let's see how fast it is. And again, I'm not gonna cheat. I'm just gonna follow this white line. Boom. Now, based off of what I felt right there, I feel like the jetpack is much faster. But if you don't have the jetpack, the Black Panther claws are good, right? They at least speed up your movement in some way. If you have no car, if you have nothing like that. And what's really nice about them is that they recharge. You know, they have infinite uses. <clears throat> yes, you do have to burn through your whole stamina bar to get those infinite uses, but you really only have to do it twice and then you get a nice infinite sprint for a while which is pretty awesome. Then the last test I think we need to do is to activate the ultra and then just hit our uh, dash attack over and over again, just to see if that is comparatively fast. Boom. So there's the time right there. I couldn't actually tell if that was faster, or slower, or the same as just sprinting with these things out because the sprint speed is honestly pretty fast, but uh, I do think that the dashes were probably a little bit faster, but we'll see. Really quick, if you're enjoying this video, please consider smashing that like button, body slamming the subscribe button, and gently clicking the notification bell to be alerted every time I go live or drop a new video. Thank you so much, my friend. Oh, and if you would consider using code toby one shinobi in your Fortnite item shop, me and my family would greatly appreciate that. All right, a pro tip for these claws when you use the super is to not aim them at a 45 degree angle. And that's because of that momentum slowdown that you get at the end of your dash. Check this out, when you do this, 
Look how I just fall out of the air. I don't really continue my momentum when I dash. So the least amount of time that you can spend in the air, the better. So you basically want to be dashing like this and landing into slides because that's going to keep you from killing your momentum. So when we activate the super, what we want to be doing is dashing at low altitude so that we're not wasting time in the air moving slow. So I'm going to head and start at this pillar as an example and see how far we get when we dash low ground versus dashing at a 45. Check this out. And we're incorporating a slide in between each of these things to try to get a little bit of that momentum going forward. So you can see we get past the cactus with our dashes. We just ran out of super. So we got to here. All right, now here's activating that super again and dashing at 45 degrees to see how far we go. As you can see, we're about 45 meters short, which is significant. So because these claws kill your momentum once you get into the air, the best way to use them even without the super is to not be in a sprint because if you enable a sprint, it burns your stamina the entire time. Watch this. I'm going to enter a sprint and watch as I'm falling out of the air, it's using my stamina. So if we don't use our sprint the whole time, and we actually just dash around without a sprint going, we're going to get more charges and we're going to go faster and further. Look at that much further. So when you're using these gauntlets to rotate around and you already have your your 100% claw charge and you don't need to build it with your sprint, just go ahead and just don't use sprint. Just be enter this into a jog and then you're gonna get more charges. And then you're also ready to go uh, with your super if somebody catches you without stamina. All right, now here's a little trick with the green skulls. And I know that earlier I mentioned to not be sprinting when you're dashing around like this, but in this case, you do wanna enter this with a sprint because it's gonna help you out. It's gonna actually add your momentum of your uh, dash into your skull dash for some reason, but you have to be sprinting to start. So here it goes. All you have to do is sprint, enter a skull dash, shuri dash, enter a skull dash again. You can see that got us pretty dang far, about 100 meters in just a single move. So it looks like this, you're gonna wanna have two skulls on you. And this is good for rotating around the edges of like the banks of the green area. It looks like this, we jump, dash, jump. And it does not work if you do not have sprint. So if you do not enter it in a sprint, it looks like this. See how it just kills my momentum? Doesn't get that nice forward momentum, so you have to start this in a sprint. Dash. Boom. And you get that nice forward momentum. And you don't have to chain all three, you can just chain two like that. But either way, it's a really nice trick for moving quickly through the green water. All right, now if you're gonna use the claws for combat, then you wanna do it like this. You always wanna supercharge yourself before you get into combat so that you have unlimited dashes. And you always want to go for a dash attack followed by a combo. That's going to get you your maximum damage right there. And then you'll be able to move fast. So you can get for 240 if you do the dash attack like this. Followed by a bunch of hits. So that is the only way that I'd recommend doing it. So if your claws are low on charge and you want to get them charged, you run across a group of AIs, go ahead and just... Hit him a bunch, kill him, but just be careful about not getting their face, letting them shoot you in the face because you will die. And then look at that, we're fully charged. So that is one way, um, you know, it's a little bit faster than having to do the sprint, the full sprint bar twice and wait for it to recharge. So these uh, AIs can actually be used to charge your claws. Um, but as I was saying before, you don't want to just come in here without your supercharged because you will end up running out of sprint like this and then you'll be in this awkward situation where you're just like trying to uh, dash around and then you're just going to get shotgun in the face. So use your ultra before you start the fight. Come in with a dash and then finish with the combo. And you have to make sure that you're within range, okay? So these gloves will not go over 15 meters. There's about a 10 meter distance. So if you're going to go for a dash attack, you want to be within 10 meters, which is pretty darn close. 
But outside, I would say 15 meters like this, 14 meters, you're gonna come up short. So 10 meters is the maximum range on that dash attack. Maybe a little bit more, maybe 12 or so. But you get the idea, right? So you need to be pretty close to people in order to fight them. And start with that dash and then follow up with the combo. All right, now pretty much the most useful thing about the jetpack and Shuri's panther claws used together in combination is that you don't have to touch the ground after another dash. So typically when you don't have a jetpack, right, you cannot use the Shuri gauntlets twice in a row like this. But if you have a jetpack, you can actually infinite uh, dash with the Shuri gauntlets by just activating your hover in between, which is pretty helpful for saving that hover uh, energy or that jetpack energy. Now, I will just say that jetpack movement in general is just better than Black Panther Claws. It just is because you can go any single direction. You don't have to be looking anywhere. The velocity on this is much better. The energy use is much better. The jetpack is pretty much superior in every single way, except for maybe verticality, getting up to things quickly, right? Shuri's claws can do that a little bit better. All right, now a pretty crazy trick with Shuri's gauntlets and the jetpack is also kind of sky basing. So if you get the ultra going, right, and it goes forever pretty much for, I mean, for 60 seconds, you can basically just continue to spam jetpack and the gauntlets. All you have to do is hit hover and then you're just hitting your left click on your mouse or, you know, your, your attack button, whatever it is. And you can see, you get pretty dang high. I'm at 200 meters now. So this could be useful if you're trying to just not get involved in a fight. If there's like your end game or something, you know, and there's like three teams and they're all battling it out and there's no cover. You want to just go sky base for a little bit, buy yourself some time so that you don't get shot to death. That might be a good move. A little bit niche, but definitely could be helpful. All right, now when using the Black Panther gauntlets or the claws in combat, it's incredibly important to understand that you are naturally at a disadvantage against jetpack users, and you've got to realize the places that you can find an advantage against them. And that would be places that have like roofs over their head and things like tall structures. And what you really want to do is be using these claws to reposition yourself quickly onto structures like this and then take some shots at them as they fly up at you and then reposition again. And then once you run out of stamina, which will happen, which is a major downside of these, is then you wanna hit your ultra. But you wanna to try to save your ultra for when you really need it when they get close to you because that's when you activate it and then you have a lot of mobility going for you. You're moving quickly, very quickly and then you can go through all these structures and this is when they actually have a hard time catching up with you is when they're flying they don't really know where you are and you're able to just kind of sprint around like this just move very fast when they're up in the air trying to catch you and then as far as just fighting in general you want to be aiming really high getting onto high ground taking shots and then repositioning when they get close you do not want to fight a jetpack user once they get above you. So you gotta move out early. So the Panther Claws are all about repositioning during fights like this. You know, getting to a different position. Okay, the jetpack guy's pushing. He's getting closer, he's getting closer. Reposition, boom. And then we're on this roof, right? That is what it's all about. You do not want anyone within a 20 meter radius of you with a jetpack. That's how you win fights, is by just constantly repositioning fighting cover and preferably high ground. Now the high ground is really good because jetpack users actually are at a slight disadvantage with how long it takes to get to high ground as they ascend into the air. But when you aim really high with these, you can actually get onto high ground quicker than a jetpack. So that's kind of one small advantage that you have and you can use that against people when you've got these three story buildings that they have to ascend up into and if you've got a little bit of distance from them. And then apart from that, it's just using your super, your ultra at the right time. Try not to waste it because you will run out of dashes fairly quick if you're doing this sort of thing where you're trying to get away. Look, we're already out of dashes and now is the time to use your super if they're right on your butt, right? They get right on your butt, you use that super and then you juke and you just drag them around. And a place like uh, Restored Reels is really good for these gloves. 
because you can create space, you can hold roofs, and you can look for these like little kill lane that they have to fly towards you in. Now, one more thing that you can do in combat with these claws, if you're good at swapping weapons between your claws and your shotgun, you can go for camera breaks. Now, I do not recommend doing this if you're out in the open and you're shooting somebody and then you pull out your claws and you go into the air. That is not what I recommend because it takes too long to pull out the claws and get into the air. It takes almost a whole half second after shooting to get into the air and you're going to take a shot or two by the time you actually get up in the air and you're easily trackable. They know exactly what you're doing. They can see you doing it. Instead, what I recommend is if you're fighting somebody at this tree and they're pushing you, you get your claws out, you wait for them to push you and then you go up into the air and then shoot them in the top of the head as you come across. And if you want to get really fancy with it, you can shoot them in the head as you're in the air, go back to your claws, jump, and do this over and over against a piece of cover such as this. And I will stress the importance of using a piece of cover here. You gotta be using a cover piece like this, and then you take them by surprise by doing something like this. That's how you can use the verticality of the claws in your favor in combat. And it can be even use something like this, right? Where you're fighting somebody, they're coming around this corner, they push you, you go up, and you do something like that or you just skip the whole corner in general, they're chasing you like this, and you dash over their head, and boom, like that. So you can use cover pieces like that in order to conceal your movement and then get above them quickly and get the drop on them. All right, guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please leave a thumbs up on it. It really helps me out. And if you like content like this, if you like in-depth guides, you got to go check out my YouTube channel and watch my must watch playlist for Fortnite Zero Build. I promise you will not regret it. All right, y'all have yourself a great morning, afternoon or evening. Shinobi out.